Hi everybody, my name is Susie and I'm a third year math student at the University of Warwick. Now, despite being in third year, I do remember what it was like when I was a prospective student for the University of Warwick. And I remember that one of the uh, resources that I could find like no information on basically was what the actual timetable would be like. Obviously, I could kind of look at some of the modules that would be available and I could see module reviews. Um, but I really couldn't find information about, you know, what my day-to-day -day life would look like. So, despite it being two years later, um, I thought I thought I would go over what my timetable was like at the time, and to the best of my abilities, try to kind of give, I guess, a rough kind of module review for some of the modules that I was taking at that time. Um, obviously, the opinions stated are a in my opinion. Um, but B are also very reflective of what was happening at the time. So uh, in first year, obviously we were in the middle of the pandemic. So basically everything that I had was online. I don't think I had, oh no, actually um, <laughs> I'm immediately lying. I, I think I had some of my personal tutor meetings were face to face, but apart from that, I think basically everything else was online for safety. So some of the things that were happening back when I was in first year might not be what are going to be happening when you're in first year uh, there might have been module changes and also I took some optional modules which I'll get into later so you might not take those modules when you come here so I guess a load of disclaimers now that I've got those out of the way uh, let's get right into it so first I think it's going to be useful to give kind of like an explanation of how how maths works at Warwick uh, or at least my experience of how it works because these things are changing I suppose um, my experience has always been through the CATS system, which is the Credit Accumulation and Transfer Scheme, which is a very fancy way of basically saying that different modules have, I guess, different weights, different amounts of credit attributed to them. Um, so when I was in first year, most of the modules I was taking were either six CATS or 12 CATS modules. I think that is currently changing. I think they um, are moving to a 10 CAT and 15 CAT system, um, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Basically, I think the idea is meant to be that one cat is uh, worth 10 hours worth of work. So obviously then a six cat module, 60 hours work, 12 cat, 120 hours of work. Very simple, you get the idea. Um, the minimum number of cats per year was 120 and the maximum was 150. So for a lot of things, a lot of like the pass marks, etc was basically graded on your best 120 cats worth of modules. Um, you know, there's there's, very, there's there's specific ways they judge these things, it's not really worth me getting into. Um, but basically what that then meant was because you kind of had those 30 cats which you could choose to do or not do. I know that some of my friends chose to take extra modules so that, you know, if one of them went really badly, it wouldn't be counted in their best 120 cats. So they kind of had that like, I guess, I guess that safety uh, module going for them, but I personally have always stuck quite close to the 120 cat, you know, minimum. Um, and that's personally just for me because I think it's never been worth that extra stress just to have, you know, the backup. I would rather have more time to concentrate on fewer modules um, and then just have to do well in those modules. It's worked out for me so far. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping it continues to work out. So, um, speaking of modules, most modules that I've taken have been a term long. That seems to be the most common length. Occasionally you get two term ones, um, but that's normally for something that's like a core module that's so, that there's so much content that it has to be over two uh, terms. Or if it's like an essay writing um, module, such as your second year essay in, in term, in year two, sorry, um, that's across multiple uh, terms to give you extra time to do that writing, I suppose. But yeah, most modules last for one term, um, and then most modules are taken in either term one or term two. There are some modules in term three, but from my experience, they're quite rare, mostly because term three is normally treated as um, an exam term. You're either taking exams or revising for exams. So, most people don't like to also be learning a new module on top of that, which you then get examinated for basically almost as soon as you're done learning it. Um, in first year, I did take a uh, third year, no, nope. in first year, I did take a third term module 
Um, and I actually quite enjoyed the experience, but I'll get more into that when I get into the actual turn-by-turn -turn view, which is what I'm going to start doing. So first up, predictably, the modules that I was taking in turn one. So here we are uh, on the Tabular website, which is uh, one of the websites which Warwick uses quite a lot, this and Moodle. Um, I have cut off some of the page just to maintain my privacy somewhat. But yeah, as you can see, this is the timetable that I had in November 2020, which is pretty indicative of what I was doing in first term in the first year. Um, for the first couple of weeks of a term, there's often kind of a transitionary period where, um, you know, you're choosing seminars because some of the seminars, there are multiple ones run, so you choose which, which group you end up in. Um, and normally during the first week especially, they like to give kind of like a... Um, a talk to the the students in your year so you kind of get up to date and up to speed with what's going on so this is what i was getting up to um you can see right off the bat that i had four different modules introduction to abstract algebra foundations analysis and differential equations um all of those four were core modules so i had no choice to take those um yeah co core modules um as the name suggests, they're meant to be kind of like the the foundational uh, aspects of maths, things that, you know, it's you need to know if you're going to continue your academic career in maths. Um, and I think it's, it's worth going into them with an open mind, because I think when I first was taking some of these, I was like, well, I have no choice. I'm not going to enjoy this, but I don't, you know, I don't get to choose it or whatever. But some of the ones that I really didn't ex in expect to enjoy I have enjoyed um, and some of the ones which I expected to enjoy uh, you know I've realized that studying at university level is very different to studying at an A level level um, so going into core modules with an open mind I think is always always a good idea uh, you can also see that I had this tutor meeting on a Monday um, I did also have a meeting with a supervisor each week. I think we had an hour each week. Um, that's not showing up on this timetable for some reason, but the tutor meetings and the supervisor meetings were very similar where you were kind of working over um, extra questions from the core modules. But also that was kind of, I think as much so that you had someone in the department who you could talk to as much as anything else. So that if you had any problems, if you wanted to chat about your academic, your personal life or anything like that, if they couldn't help you, they could at least pass you on to someone else. Um, so it was nice having that scheduled in. Um, and also, I think as I already mentioned, they were one of the only face-to-face -face things I had when everything was online. So it was especially nice to actually, <laughs> actually see people, I guess. But yeah, you can see it, it was a pretty, a pretty reasonable split. I never had more than three hours of lectures on one day. Um, I think that they do prioritise timetables in first year, that seems to be my experience. Or they, they try to make the timetables nicer for first years than any other years. Uh, <laughs> I guess maybe they're trying not to scare everyone off. Um, but yeah, you can see I had... <laughs> let me just count that up. Three, four, five, six, seven, nine hours of lectures uh, every week. Technically that's not nine hours of lectures because you can see some of these are seminars versus actually lectures um but i'll let you guys work out the split for yourselves um it's normally quite even between lectures and seminars so it's an even split between getting new content and then actually kind of applying that with questions and stuff which i've personally quite enjoyed so of those four modules um i really enjoyed the introduction to abstract algebra ones and the differential equation ones the most i think um for all four of them, I think because it was online, each module had two lecturers and they would kind of swap. Um, I don't remember any of the lecturers being that bad. I mean, it was definitely a culture shock that there were quite a few different teaching styles, I guess. Um, in particular, Dave Woods, uh, I think the only lecturer I'm going to name by name in this video, but mostly because he is head of undergraduate maths, I believe. Um, and somewhat of an icon, he always made lectures very, very engaging, so I very much appreci appreciated him um, teaching differential equations. Introduction to Abstract Algebra I really enjoyed because I found it just a very interesting module. I thought it was taught very well with lots of good engaging uh, examples and I enjoyed working through the questions. But I know some people found it a bit definition heavy, 
Uh, personally, I didn't mind that, but it did turn some people off of the uh, subject. Foundations and analysis, I think, were the two ones which were both... Everyone seemed to have some difficulties with them. So, foundations I struggled with mostly because, as the name suggests, foundations, it was, you know, going back to the principles of mathematics. But that almost made it worse because it was things which should, should be easy, but then you had to really properly prove everything. You couldn't leave anything to chance. You couldn't let the examiner, like, take the, the steps. You had to explain every single part of what you were doing. Um, and it was, it was very different to what I was used to. Um, and I think ended up being one of my worst grades. I still passed it. I still did, you know, I was so happy with the grade that I got, but I think it's, it's one of the ones which I had to put a lot of work into. And the same with analysis. Analysis was very proof heavy and it was a type of math that I hadn't really gone into a lot of detail before. So studying analysis, and analysis is one of those ones which keeps coming up through all of math. So if you don't understand it, you, if you don't understand it at some point, it's gonna be a lot more difficult later. So it is really worth putting in that extra effort to understand it. Um, and to not just, it was one of those ones which was very easy to kind of just, if you skim read the proofs, then you could be like, yeah, I understand this. This is, a, yeah, they just do that step, that step, cool, whatever. But it's very easy to read the proofs without actually understanding the proofs. Um, and then if it came back to a point where I would be asked to replicate the proofs or to apply the same principles in another way, I would have struggled a lot. So I, I really did have to put quite a lot of work uh, into both foundations and analysis. When I started filming this video, it wasn't originally my intention, but it turned out to get really long. So I'm going to cut it there and uh, next month I will be re releasing the part two, which will cover um, term two, term three, and then a little overview at the end. But sorry for the abrupt conclusion, it was just getting way too long. So I hope you enjoyed the overview of what maths is like as a system and then also what term one of maths is like at Warwick. Thank you. See you in the next video.